Hey everybody, it's Annie. Welcome to my little daily show on this wonderful international streaming tube where I help you build a career you love. If you haven't got the memo, it's Community Appreciation Week. I'm glad to have you. It's Tuesday. So we did a show yesterday. It's wonderful. It's about an hour and a half. Today we're going to be on for about an hour or so. I'm going to take as many questions as I possibly can and I'm going to get through as many of these key intro points as fast as possible as I can. So, I'm dedicating this week to you because I love you. Show up every day at 11 o'clock Central Daylight Time. That's where I am. I don't, it's noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, 10 Mountain. Uh, today, yesterday, today, tomorrow, and Thursday, all for you. Every day this week, through, uh, Monday through Thursday, you'll be getting an email from me if you're on my email list. If you're not on my email list, Kara will pop it into the chat you can subscribe because each day i am sending you a gift yesterday was the ebook and audio book version of how to reach but insight using goals to achieve your impossible it is my motivational inspirational and all around wonderful book about how to use goals to get everything you want out of life that's free it's normally 17 bucks today We kicked out a resume submittal checklist. I think there's a video that goes with that too, somewhere on my YouTube channel. But tomorrow, you're going to get my 65-point job interview prep checklist. We don't offer that anywhere publicly. It's it's inside the courses. And on Thursday, you're going to get an ebook that is normally $27 that I don't that I don't offer publicly either. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're opening your emails. I can see that a bunch of you are clicking on the link. So I think that's that's a great thing. And then there are also a number of discounts on the Mile Walk Academy programs, namely the Job Search Bootcamp, which is $100 off, the Interview Intervention course, which is normally $297, but that's $200 off, so that's $97. Bucks. And my Leadership Monthly Live Mentoring Program is normally $49 a month, but I do have an annual 50% off pack for $297. So Kara can dump those in the chat. Let's go right to it because we're on an hour today, which to me seems like almost no, no time. But an hour is good. That was only two minutes for hellos and announcements. Let's roll. Vanessa slash AKA will retire the Vinica name. I know you're a boot camper. I love having you. You're checking in with my references to keep the relationships warm. Is there anything that I should consider in this communication? What I would do is I would email them with almost no information. And that's the friendly tap tap. So for Vanessa and for everybody else who needs to get in touch with references who, whether you've spoken with them in a while or haven't spoken with them in a while or you've spoken with them recently, This is my protocol for getting in touch with your references. You send them a quick email. You let them know you're active. Hey, wanted to check in. I know it's been a little while. Wanted to let you know I am interviewing for some jobs. I would love it if you would help me and serve as a reference. Would you be open to that? That's it. You want to you want to tap on the shoulder. Yes or no question. And then what you do is you call them. You got to call them. You got to call them and say, hey, here's what's going on. Here's the kind of positions I'm interviewing for. Or, hey, I've got one on the line. What you do not want to do is you do not want to get into motion, start getting job interviews, and then hustle up to try to get in touch with them because you don't know if anybody's out of town, if they left the country, if they're running away from the law, who knows, but you you want to make sure that you are uh, that you are in touch with them. So, I would I don't I don't think that in the email communication or a LinkedIn in mail or whatever you, a text or whatever you're going to use, that's totally okay. Just make sure tap on the shoulder, would you serve as a reference? I'll reach out to you and fill you in, but I just wanted to know if you'd be open to that. So that's that's how I like to do it. Okay, and so I I you know you're you're a big girl, you know, you know what to do from there. Okay, unrepentant Drew. Hey Andrew, how you doing? Checking in today as well. Great to have any advice on how to keep your morale up. I'm in my early 50s, me too, and caught uh, got caught in a corporate layoff back in 2017 and have run into a lot of ageism. Yes, okay, unrepentant Drew. 
I got a whole host of stuff for you. Uh, so let me see. I I'm actually going to point you to a number of things, and I'm going to give you I'm going to give you one piece of feedback in general for everybody whose whose morale is is dipping. It doesn't matter if you're in your early 50s or any age. But the way that I view happiness. Uh, so let's talk about the the point, the philosophy, and then I'll give you the assets. Most people uh, that become unhappy for whatever reason, I mean, there's a million reasons we become unhappy, if any one of a number of things. But typically what makes us unhappy is when we either are feeling out of control of a situation or if it, so just we, we just we don't feel like we can control the outcome. That sometimes tends to lead to unhappiness. And the, and the other thing is when we're measuring ourselves by the wrong metrics. So in, in, in your case, or and, and I know you didn't get this explicit, Drew, but a lot of people judge their worthiness based on the number of interviews they're getting. If they're not getting job offers, they think they're not worthy, all that good stuff. That is, 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 is not, those are not the right metrics that you should be using so to, 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 to determine the control of your job search or your happiness level. So what I always preach is that I want you to be able to control what you can control. And what you can control in, an, in a job search is your self-discovery. So am I looking for things that I, that I want that will make me happy? Am I truly looking and targeting and being deliberate in that regard? That's the first biggie. The second one is, is my marketing material, my cover letters, my LinkedIn profile, my resume itself, and so on. You can control that. That's the content and all the stuff that you can shape from the comfort of your own home, just like this. And then the next thing is, are you controlling the outflow of that content, that marketing material, those reach outs, and so on? You, Drew, you can send your resume anywhere you want. You don't have to only limit yourself to what you see is publicized or what you consider to be an announced or publicized job opening. There's many, many ways for you to circulate your resume, to network, and all those other things. I've talked at length about, about these things. Now, when you, when you look at for you, uh, how I would go about increasing my happiness by getting more in control of that outflow, the content, and ultimately your reaction to what, what comes back to you, is we just did, and I have a number of these out there. There's a, a video on you know staying positive in your job search. There's a, you know, there's a video about that. There's a live office hours topic about that. And we also just did this a couple or three Oh, I'm losing track of the weeks, but I just did a job search accelerator workshop and I was going to pull it down, but it's still up there. And if you if if you go to my YouTube channel and you just look at the videos uh, uh, fairly recently, there's going to be like four cards that all have the same thumbnail that say job search accelerator. One of those, uh, the the Actually, it's the third and the fourth one because we had a technical blowout during the session. So there's actually two uh, videos that are on the channel that were live streams that are that are from the same thing. But it, it's about the job search challenge. And if you look at that video, uh, there's probably, I don't know, a half an hour of instruction of how to go about the challenge. That's you taking control of your outflow and then also all the problems that you are going to have as a result of that of that outflow, how to overcome them. There's the six biggest problems you're going to encounter. I solved those for you right in the same in the same show. And then to 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 finish you off here, uh, if you're falling into the ageism category, check my channel for a number of ageism related videos. So there is a video on job searching advice for over 50 year olds. There is a video on how to overcome age discrimination in a job interview. There's a few others. You could put the word age in or something like that and you will you will find them. So that's what I would do, Drew. And you got a lot of good stuff there. And if you get going with the challenge, you will, uh, you know, I think you will do well. By the way, I mean, early 50s is not, I know there's ageism issues, but I hope you're not feeling old and uh, there's a lot of value that people in their early 50s who've been working 30 years can contribute to companies. So, so don't let anybody, um, you know, don't, don't, don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Hope that helped.
All right. Akshay, I think it's Akshay. Oh, hey, everybody, got my, got my, can I help? That's me in my buffalo plaid shirt sitting in front of a big monitor saying, how can I help you? All right, thank you very much for the network today. You are welcome. I'm receiving replies from recruiters. Yes. Also, I had one question. I see two positions at this for the same role on a website at a company. Same role. Uh, I want to apply. One is an internship. Oh, the other is a full-time position, but I graduate in May 2020. I'm interested in both. Wh uh, which should I tell the recruiter I that I am interested in? Uh, thank you again uh, for all the great things you do. It is incredible the amount of things I have learned from you. Wonderful to hear you're grateful. I'm grateful for you and your attention and showing up. And it just, it, it makes me happy. It, it really, really does. Um, so here's, here's what I would do. I would apply for the internship and because you're graduating in May, 2020. And then what I would do is I would send, I would try to send the, if you can get the recruiter, um, you know, if you can get the recruiter's response you said you're getting some responses i don't know if one of the responses was for this particular position but i would if i was going in cold which i never like to do even for internships so so for point one for all of you college students those that are looking for internships those are looking for co-ops whatever it is that you're doing while you're in school same tactics apply okay so so if you can hunt down somebody inside the company and say I am a college student looking for an internship, and uh, that is the route to go. It has always worked. It's how I got my college internships. It's I targeted companies, same kind of thing. One time I went to a fair that was you know one of those things, but those techniques will still work even today. Uh, so so that's the first thing. Second thing is if you can't hunt somebody down, but you can find an opportunity, it is an internship. I would apply through the through the portal or through the website or whatever it is. Use the same kind of tactics that I've given you. If you've seen the my recommendation on job scan, I have a, a, a personal link for job scan because I have a, a working relationship with them where they give me a couple of bucks if you ultimately end up subscribing. But the first month or so is free, so just create a free account, whether you use my link or, or not. And then I would make sure that you're running your resume through that. Then I would submit it into the into the portal. But but for you, I would go with the internship first. And what then what I would do is I would see how that goes. And if you if you are fortunate enough to get that role, then what I would do is then I would plant the seed that you're interested in working there full time when you're done. But I wouldn't I wouldn't try to apply for the full time unless you want to quit school. So I mean or go to school part-time or something in that nature. But honestly, I would probably apply for the internship. And if something doesn't work out and you want to apply for the full-time, I guess you could go ahead and do that. But I, I just, I don't like the timing there. So I hope that helps. That's what I would do. But make sure, you know, you, you're using the collegiate resume template, but from a, from a pursuit perspective, you're using all the same tactics that I give all the professionals too. So I hope that helps, bud. Adam Stark, oh, I love... Adam, you take instruction well. One of two, two of two. I, I said this yesterday for those of you who weren't here, that if you have a long one, um, you know, put it in your notepad and then, you know, you know you got 200 characters and then and then slap it in really quick and let me know you got a bunch of them because that kind of helps because I know YouTube's kind of stingy with the, uh, with the, uh, whatchamacallits, with the, with the 200 characters. Okay, do you have any advice on how to make your job needs sound positive? I want freedom in my role because I hate micromanagement and it limits my ability. Okay, great, thank you for the sample, that's awesome. I'm also having trouble expressing why some of my needs are important to me at the core. Um, P.S., I hope you're well, I, I, I am well. Uh, so wait, so, so, so thank you for that. Let's go back to the beginning. So his first question, do you have any advice on how to make your job needs sound positive? Yes. So the example Adam gave was he wants freedom. Let's just roll together freedom, flexibility, autonomy, right? Most of us, especially people who have been working for a while, we want 
and by the way, I'm not going to tell you what to like. I'm just saying in general, lots of people generally like that freedom to kind of make their job of it what they can. They want guidance as to what needs to be done. And then a lot of people like to kind of do it the way that they want to produce it, to have the freedom, not have somebody standing over the shoulder, checking in on them every hour or every day. And most people want that. So Adam, this is a great example because a lot of people want the flexibility. So what I tend to do is I let, I let um, in the screen, so in the, in the interviewing screen with the recruiter, the HR person, or, or, or even if it's the hiring official, whoever is taking down the things that you are looking for in a role, if I would say something to the effect of, you know, my career development is important, my opportunity to be challenged, I particularly like challenges such as, I would keep moving through my list, and then when I got to the freedom and flexibility one, I would probably say something like, and I also thrive best in, um, in an environment where the boss sets the tone and then gives me some creative license or autonomy to actually make it happen. And I recognize that that needs to be earned, but I'm, I'm really looking for a boss who's gonna help me grow by allowing me to. So what you're saying is I, I, I thrive in this, I know I need to earn it, but this is the environment I operate best in. There is nothing negative about that. So, so I would throw it out that way. So every time you have something that you need, um, you can just say, you know, I thrive best in here. Based on my history, I've noticed the places that I've enjoyed working the most and have produced the greatest results have had these common characteristics and, and so on. You're always talking about what you are, not what you're not. Try never to say, because that's the same thing, right? Hey, I don't want a micromanager. I do want somebody who provides autonomy. One of the things that I do, little side note here for Adam and everybody else, when, and I've talked about this at length. I know some of you probably just found me a few hours ago, but one of, one of my big, big things is about your needs. Okay, so Adam is talking about your list of requirements that helps you understand what you want, what you do best with, the type of virtual environment you're creating for yourself, meaning your operating environment, the type of people, what you're doing, where you're doing it, all that good stuff, the education you're getting, and so on. When you have a, when you are thinking about these things, what most people tend to do when they're changing jobs or when they've been let go and they're looking for a new job is they think about all the things that they hate about their current situation or their most recent situation. And recency creates a bias for you. You place great weight on things that are happening right now, even though they really should not have any greater weight than all the other things that you need. And actually, a lot of them usually should have less weight. But... What you want to make sure that you do is when you generate your requirements, I always say to people, there's your blank sheet of paper. Write down everything you want. And if it helps you to stimulate ideas, you can write about everything you hate and then just flip it over. Okay, so this is a great, a great way to say that. What's going through your head is I don't want to be micromanaged. What should be coming out of your mouth is I thrive best in environments where I am given the, the, the goal, a little direction, my boss lets me go, he or she is and I are communicating regarding my progress, what's happening, and is there when I need them with love and support. And so on. That's, that's the way you need to articulate that. So I would not worry. Just make sure you're, you're getting the antonym of anything that sounds negative. And that's it. That's your trick. So I hope that helps. That's a good one, man. Evelyn O, how you doing? Victoria A. Hi, Ander. Is there any room for salary negotiation when one is applying for a five months paid internship program, or is it not norm to do any kind of pay discussion in those situations? Victoria, I think this whole world and everything in it is negotiable. Doesn't matter if it's for sale or not. Doesn't matter what they tell you. I would ask for more money if you feel you deserve more. Actually, I probably would ask for money no matter what I thought of myself, but yes, I, now, they might say, hey, Victoria, we've got a line of 100 people waiting for this job. You don't want to take the five grand a week or five grand a month or whatever it is. I'm just going to go to the next person. Then it's up to you to say, okay, I'll take it, right? So I, you can always ask. You can always ask. I would always, I want you to look at my face right now. Andy always says ask. Ask, ask, ask. 
for Victoria and everybody else. Varun, hey, hey there, how you doing? Sent you a LinkedIn message. I did. I do not sign the books. Uh, I because they are at a sh- at a warehouse far away from my house. Uh, I had an interview. Um, had an interview. HR said they will get back to me no matter what, but did not. It's been. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, over two. Oh, oh, sorry, over two weeks. Had reached out via phone message and email. No response. Do I call it quits? Uh, so. I don't love when we don't have designated time frames from whoever is, uh, you know, communicating with you. That that hey, we're gonna get back to you no matter what by when. So if they said we're gonna get back to you no matter what by the end of the week, and they haven't gotten back to you in two weeks, and you've called them and emailed them, mentally I'm moving on. But what I'm what I'm what I'm probably doing is there's probably still one foot on that side of the door that's still inside the house. But what I what I also what's going through my head at this point is if they do come back after a, a big delay, after saying they would call me, after I've given them messages, and then they get back to me, is this the kind of place that I want to work? So that's that's what that's what goes through my head. That's what goes through my head. And I know some of you are probably sitting there saying, well, Andy, geez, that's easy for you to say. You know, you're not looking for a job. But believe me when I tell you, we do this with clients. Uh, we do this with clients that are pros- or sorry, prospects, potential clients. They're not getting back, you know, or they're not responding. We do this with clients when we submit a candidate and they, they tell us, hey, this is really urgent, 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 and they don't get back to me for a day or two or whatever it is. That sends me signals too. Everybody has this in their life somewhere where they have to say, I need to mentally move on because I'm I'm worth more than that. And I want you all to know that I think you are worth more than that. And if companies are doing this to you, they're sending you messages, ruin everybody else. And this is a big world. There are a lot, I mean, I know it's a small world, but there, this is a big world. There's a lot of opportunities out there. And what happens is you start, you start uh, thinking false things because you've been looking for a job for a while or maybe you're not getting over the goal line or you've had some interviews and it hasn't worked out. You got to keep at it. You got to keep at it. You got to know your self-worth. And you all, my guess, are darn good at what it is that you do. What, what's happening is you're losing confidence or whatever because you're not getting a job right away because some crazy interviewers aren't giving you a job or employers are behaving weirdly or they're not getting back to you when they should or whatever. And going all the way back to what Drew was asking earlier, control what you can control. Varun, you could keep looking for other opportunities. Don't don't expend too much emotional energy or mental energy, whatever you want to call it, on, on, on people that are not getting back to you. So I can't tell you to call it quits, but I can say... You need to look at the signs, consider it a sign, look for other signs. Is the company not following through on what it says? Are the interviewers showing up on time? Is the schedule of interviewers that they're giving you, is it the same as who's showing up? Like all the little things matter. They all matter. So keep an eye on that. Chickens are good. Uh, my poor wife, actually, hold on one second, I gotta move this over. My poor wife had to clean the chicken coop because it, it was we had torrential rain uh, it was so nasty, I couldn't believe it. And my poor wife, I, no one will ever call her prissy for sure. That's for sure. All right, Jeff Norris. All right, I think this says, Hi, Andy, I'm a recent college grad. My friend sent me an email to someone that works in, in this company that's starting in Raleigh. Okay, great. How should I approach cold emailing her about a potential job? This is awesome. For anybody who's in my job search boot camp, I scripted this networking email for you. Uh, for you, Jeff, who I don't think is in my job search boot camp, what I would do is I would reach out. My my friend gave me your name. I'm I'm a recent college graduate who has who's studied whatever you've studied, looking for uh, opportunities in Raleigh related to whatever it is. I'm wondering if you know you'd be open to connecting with me or helping me find the right person inside the organization that I could connect with and send my resume to. Something of that nature. I would not, uh, you know, you what you could do. Um, 
So in this particular case, I do like you attaching your resume uh, to to this. Uh, which say that uh, a friend sent me an email to someone that works to him or her. Oh, her, and and just say you know I have attached my resume. Um, you know, in the event you'd like to forward it. Uh, otherwise, please get back to me and would love to connect. That's all. I mean, I, you, know, you know, don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Natalie Taylor, how you doing? Cecilia, my London friend, how are you? Hello from hot London. So I was out, you know, I'll tell you what. It, like I ran, so I ran, I'm a runner. I ran Saturday, Sunday. Monday's my off day. I ran this morning. So it was like 100 on Saturday. It was like 85 and deathly humid on Sunday. And this morning my run was was early and it was in the woods and it was only 66 degrees. And I, I felt like my, you know, I, if, I didn't, if I didn't get the opportunity to show up with you, I'd still be running. And I started running at seven this morning. And, uh, you know, so I don't know how hot, hot London is, but man, it is sure not hot here. Not today. Connie Cotter. Connie Cotter, and think the value I receive from working with you far exceeds the value I have given <laughs> to me. <laughs> All right, wait. Can I, uh, I got to say something. So, Connie, thank you for the video that you sent me. I need you to actually send it to me on a different platform so I could use it. Um, I've asked some, actually, any of you that are out there that are in my programs, or for that matter, right now since we're on the subject, any of you that have, feel you've gotten any kind of benefit from me, in any capacity, uh, I'm, I'm doing a goal setting masterclass in the middle of August and we're gonna be taking some breaks and I wanted to share people's experience during the breaks. So I'm asking people if they wanted to shoot a quick 30 second video, one minute video, I don't care how long you wanna talk, 10 seconds about your experience working with me. So if you're in the programs, all you gotta do is take your iPhone and just say it and just share your experience. I know a lot of the, the boot campers and people in my leadership program, they share them in the, in the chat, but I thought the video touch would be nice, and Connie, you were first in line, so thank you for that. All right, since applying your advice from yesterday, just do it, I have made great advances in the work with the team. Hard to say it all here, I'm so grateful. Okay, so let's refresh Connie, awesome. And Connie was asking yesterday, for those who missed it, uh, you know, she she's quarterbacking a process, has a number of people who are contributing to the process with subject matter expertise. They're eager to help. This is awesome, right? But sometimes people's eagerness to help can, can be a problem if they want to help, 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 and they're trying to rush you along where you need to fill out the backbone and the skeleton for them to fill in or, or, or help with. And so we, we talked about, you know, getting it 80 80 there, 80 or 90. I'm glad. I love it. And you know what? A lot of that is is probably every bit as, you know, mental or emotional as it is actually doing stuff. So I'm glad to hear that. Awesome, awesome stuff. And love the video. <laughs> Just Evelyn O. Regarding an employment gap, if unemployed a few years but graduated with a 3.6 GPA, and interviewers concerned about your ability to learn whatever they need to learn, can you mention your? I'm assuming that means your GPA. Uh, as a way to demonstrate that you can learn. So, Evelyn, I think you can do whatever you feel in, in this particular case that would help illustrate your capacity to learn. And the other thing about GPA, uh, GPAs is, generally speaking, and this is for college students, recent college graduates, anybody going back for their MBA or their MS or their PhD or whatever, very rarely, very rarely, so I don't like using words like always and never, but very rarely does anybody actually care whether it was a 3.0 or a 4.0, okay? That's just that's just typical. Uh, however, if you feel that you wanna show that as an adult, you went back to school, right? You got your degree and you, know, you, you came in with great grades, and that's a demonstration of your ability to juggle life, adulthood, uh, whatever, you know, family situation, whatever it might be, as well as get good grades for an undergraduate degree, because I think it was an undergraduate degree. Um, I think that's okay. I, I, I do. But I also think that you need to have another professional case study to back that up. 
So, you know, my ability to learn, it, you know, I was faced with the situation where I didn't know, you know, I hadn't experienced it before. And Evelyn, for you and for everybody else who is faced with anything related to you not having experience. So, and I know Evelyn, she's a boot camper, so I know her situation and I know that she ha has a gap, went to school, is going back into the workforce now. But for anybody, anywhere that has an interview question about something that you do not know, you do not have uh, experience with, or anything of this nature. So this also goes for what do I do if I don't have the experience? When you are given a question like that in an interview, you need three parts to your answer to the interviewer. Number one, I've yet to do that. That's it. You do not need to say anything more. I've yet to have the opportunity to do that. I've yet to get that. I've yet to gain that experience. You do not need to say anything beyond that. That's it. End of that part. The next thing is, but so, but even so, you can you can say even so. You can say but. You say whatever you want. But you need to transition into what you are, not what you're not. And if you do have some experience that you can draw on, any analogy. I've never worked with this software product, but I worked with this other software product that's just like it. I've never done that business process, but I've done this business process that's just like it. I've never used that program management methodology, but I use this other one that's very much like it. Whatever it is, anything you can draw from. I've done the school project that was, I don't care what it was, but, but this is what I have done and it would allow me to get up to speed quickly and I would take what I've learned and be able to draw quick analogies so that I could assimilate quickly that's the second part of the answer. And the third part of the answer is, and when I'm ever faced with something, like we all are faced with something every day, right? We as adults, as we go through our professional lives, are constantly bombarded with things we've never seen before. So this is not hard for them to digest. And just like whenever I'm faced with anything that I've not encountered before, here are the steps I go through in order to get up to speed quickly. Here's what the interviewer heard. Okay, maybe you didn't have the experience. And you know what? The interviewer probably should have known that if by looking at your resume because you didn't say you had the experience, right? That should be first. And the second thing is, oh, but she does have something she can draw on. And third, you know, she got a pretty good plan for getting up to speed. I like that. So I'm not going to really worry because the trade is always easier to teach than the traits. Remember that. And any, and any employer who tells you otherwise doesn't know the first thing about what really makes an employee successful. So, so that's what I would do, Evelyn, and anybody else. And what I just said, if you get if you get this guy, if you get this guy, this is this is free when you chip in seven dollars for picking, packing, and shipping, because that's what you're actually paying for. Uh, a fraction of that. Uh, it's it's in the the sixth chapter, which is my silver bullet interviewing chapter. It is question number ten. And the question is, how do you educate yourself? And then there's variations of that. What I just said to you, this little clip, that's where that is. So if you wanna grab it, you could read it, you can get the entire script all written out by yours truly when I wrote it in 2011. All right. Cecilia, let's see, I wanna look great, great. John Bailey, you're not a loser or a quitter until you give up. That's right, that's right. Being laid off three times, fighting aggressive. Oh my God, buddy. Well, I, John Bailey, I'm wishing you well. I did not know about your cancer, but I am, I am pulling for you, my friend. You've been a great contributor to the Malwa Academy, and I hope everybody in this, in this chat right now, all 134 of you, can give John Bailey some really damn good wishes because that he's a good guy, and, um, and you know, cancer's tough. My mother-in-law's going through it right now. I'm seeing it firsthand. It, it's, 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 it's rough stuff. So. Hoping you're hoping you're doing okay. All right, Kathleen Phillips, one of the world's. You should be like in the Guinness Book of World Records for one of the greatest huggers of all time, maybe the greatest hugger. Look at that. See how those boot campers jump right in there and wish him the best. Christy B, another boot camper. How you doing? Hi, Andy, boot camper here. Excited to check in for no. I'm all, you know I love having you. I'm down to the final two for Dream Job. Excellent. I'm super excited and mildly terrified. Do not be. Meeting with my potential boss and the CEO, they are both very different characters, one very straight, the other more bubbly. Any tips on how to approach it? So here's what I always suggest 
uh, on the one hand, I want you to be you. So I, I like that whole, you know, kind of mirror who you're selling to. There's some truth to that. But I think that you need to just, my, my best tip would be I would try to get in sync with, with, the other, with the other person. So if one is a little more bubbly and is a little more jovial, you know, I think it's okay to be a little looser there. If the other one is, and I don't know which one's which, but if, if the other one's a little bit more, uh, you know, stiff, just be a little bit more formal, but don't, you know, don't not be you, don't not be you, but knowing you, you know, you're in HR and recruiting and, you know, I, you're going to be fine. I, I would not, so everything I taught you in the boot camp, plus just, just try to, you know, friending the interviewer is, is important and, and, and kind of getting in sync that way. All right, Richard Ford, how you doing? 64 down oh buddy uh well richard ford i'm gonna give you the same advice that i gave to uh drew earlier about staying positive the the challenge the ageism stuff send hang in there and mark peckney look at you showing up couple of medallions on his chest there in the mouth i can't love having you <laughs> oh it's so great and kara finally showed up all right that's good Bangle baby, bangle baby, got your email. So it is much more effective. Um, so bangle baby, this is for you. It's much more effective to figure out where you want to go and insert your network in between versus telling your network, I'm going here, can you get me there? That's too difficult for me to wrap my head around. If you got people you want to meet that you know I'm connected to, I'm happy to introduce you. But to think in an open field is not is not going to get is not going to get get an, a quick response or any response for any way. So I'm happy to help you network. You got to help me g know where you want to go. So that's for you. All right. You know, wait. Are you guys talking about the count? I never. Um... Okay, wait. Side note here because I think. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my, that's hot. All right, talking about the temperature. All right, stay in. Okay, Mary from Oak Brook. During economic downturn, I kept up my real estate, plus I had a job in corporate finance. On LinkedIn, can I show 15 years real estate or do I need to call out this extra job? Uh, okay, so couple things, because Mary, I don't know exactly what your um, what you know what it looks like exactly. If I, if memory serves me from the live office hour stuff, you also work for Accenture, and one thing everybody needs to know about LinkedIn when I, as a recruiter, look at a LinkedIn profile. When I see simultaneous stuff, um, it's confusing to the recruiter. They hate it. Okay, so pick real estate or pick Accenture or pick whatever you're going to do. And make, don't, don't, no one wants to see extra jobs. So when recruiters are looking at you, or people are looking at you to see if they want to pull you into their company, they really don't like when they see m multiple streams of work. Okay, we, we, we ignore those. We say, too, too scattered. I'm not saying you're scattered, Mary. When we look at those profiles, we, we say, hey, look, I don't know if he's dedicated to the consulting or this or that or what they're doing. You know, I don't need, I need somebody who's dedicated 100%, totally focused in this and that. So, so, I, if you want to go into real estate sales, then put real estate and make it look like your job. If you if you are trying to show some gap, if it's a gap situation, that's fine. But don't don't run it the same uh, the same years. So if you did you know um, 2000 and 2000 and 2007 consulting, 2008 to you know I don't know present real estate, that's fine. 
But if you got consulting from 2000 or how, you know, whatever the years are, all the way to today, and then you've been doing real estate for extra money, you know, to put food on the table, I don't know that I would put any of that in there. But I, without knowing you exactly and all the things that you, you know, what your targets are and where you want to go, it's hard to say. But my point is taken about don't look, don't look like you have too many things going on. If I can't very easily see what it is you do, then I, I, I just, we just move on. That's what we do. So, so, and I'm assuming that one of your goals is to get people to like your profile so that they'll call you. And if that's the case, don't, don't be careful. You want to you want to put in the in the in the bottom, you know, um, you know, dabble in real estate and whatever. That's fine, but I, I would, I would just be really careful. And I don't like I don't have all the facts, so I think the only real strong point I want to make is just be careful that you don't have multiple streams run at the same time. Jason Garrity, hey, how you doing? Been laid off after six months. Prospective employer asked for details on why I was laid off in such a short span. However, use your, use your suggestion not to be specific however they want detail. Uh, Jason, uh, can you tell me what the detail is and then I'll tell you what to tell them. Uh, I can't, I don't know, I can remember off the top of my head what the what the reason was. So I, when I say don't, I, what I said is don't over explain. I didn't, I didn't say don't give them uh, details. It's, I don't want you to over explain. So if your unit, my company decided that the unit I was in was not, um, you know, was no longer strategic, they got rid of the whole unit. That's explaining. That's telling them what happened. They sold it off to that other company. Uh, my company divested. Boom. We, they rearranged. My company merged. I, th- my unit was considered redundant with the parent company, so everybody got let go. That, those are some reasons. Or, you know what, my, my situation is, you know, I, I took this job and I got let go um, because the, the organization felt like my skills didn't match to whatever. You know, when, when I got there, I thought I was taking one job. It looked like they wanted me to do something else or whatever. The skills weren't aligned, so we decided. To, like, there's, you got to give them something. I just don't want you running on for five minutes with this because usually you should be able to explain something like this literally in a sentence or two. But there should be enough detail to pacify them. So if so, Jason, so a couple things. It, head to the bottom, let me know specifically what the situation was and I can tell you what to say. Or you can join you know, Friday at the boot camp. We can go through it. You can send me the situation at support at malwalk.com and we can discuss it for you. We'll ha- we'll handle this for you. Just let me know, you know, where you want it handled. But give me I'm going to need a little more than that. All right. Hi mom, how are you? Janice, Alina, hello. Alina, I am not running the Badwater 135 because that would be crazy. But I do like I do like badass stuff like that though. Uh, all right. During the challenger challenge or in general, if contacting multiple contacts at the same co- oh, if or and if one or two respond, how do you handle the others? Uh, do you follow up and see where the first contact leads first? So, so Alina and everybody else who's contacting multiple folks at a company, first thing I would recommend is you contact who you think is the best person to contact. You can determine that based on their level, their position, their area, their region, their whatever, their unit, their strength of the relationship to you. So if you say, that guy, Andy, that guy's the boss, but I know Kara, and Kara's my friend, I'm going to contact Kara. That's fine. That's totally cool. And then what I would do is I'd space them out. If you space them out appropriately, like a week and then you you wait a week, you contact somebody else, and then on the eighth day, the first person contacts you. It's at that point, it's okay to say, okay, this is great, um, and then and then you can determine if you want to mention that I also, con- you know, I waited about a week, you know, I, fe- I thought you might be busy, so I reached into so-and-so. You can do that. 
what what really stinks is if you contact five people on the same day and two of them get back to you the next day and now you're you know what i mean and 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 so that's a little bit hairier so to you know during the challenge uh, i would you, you can contact multiple people at the same company i would just kind of give them a reasonable amount of time to get back to you because you, you never you never know and if you are using uh, like we taught you in the boot camp with how to uh, be notified if they opened your email or what they did with the email, that would be good too because then you would know if they read it or not or forwarded it or not. So, um, so, that's, so that's how I would do it. So if, if the second person responds, then, then you, know, you, might want, you might want to say, hey, I'd love it. You know, just, I, would, I would literally just try to build a relationship with that person too. But it depends if they're in the same unit. It depends if they're in the same division. It depends how big or small the company is. And then you have to determine how you would handle that. So I hope I hope that helped. I hope, I hope that helped. Steve G, good day to you. Gary, how you doing? Alina, you have the Out of Reach But Insight book in your training portal. Uh, you got it as a gift for being a boot camper. For everybody who's out there, if you are a boot camper, I give you all the books. My, the Hiring Prophecies, the out of, out of Reach But Insight book. You get the Interview Intervention book too. And you get all the courses. You get the Interview Intervention course. You get the Resume course. You get the all the stuff, the Ultimate Career course. All those are extras. And then you get the boot camp and all of its goodies. So just in case anybody didn't know that, and I actually don't think, um, I don't even advertise that. <laughs> on the page because I like there to be surprises when you know when you open it up but you Alina you have it um, and for anybody who missed yesterday's email the out of reach but insight for everybody else who's not a boot camper the out of reach but insight link is in today's email and if you missed today's email that link's gonna be in tomorrow's email so so Monday's email and had a link, the out of reach book. Today's email had the resume submittal checklist. If you missed those, watch your email tomorrow because at seven or six in the morning or whatever it is, we're gonna send another one and it'll have those two plus tomorrow's gift. So, uh, so but uh, Alina yours is in there. And for everybody else, we're gonna, we're, we're giving it to you. All right, hey, 1147, if, if you're loving this, um, if you're loving this, click the little thumbs up button. YouTube loves that. Share this because I'm doing this again tomorrow and again Thursday. Uh, the boot camp is $100 off. And one thing I didn't mention on the boot camp is it's got tons of extras this time. The most I've ever given away is bonuses. But the next three Fridays are private boot camp sessions. And then a couple weeks later, there's another one. And then a few weeks, a month or so later, there's like five more. But over the course of the year, you get something like 24 to 30 co private group coaching sessions with me if you're in the boot camp and you get it for life and you can keep coming to all the sessions for life. So people come for their career development and ask me questions. And then the other thing is the interview intervention course is 200 off, so it's $97. And I think the links are in there somewhere. And, um, and then what else, the, the leadership, uh, we've got a, a half off annual promotion going right now as well. So I hope that helps on those. All right, Chanel, hey, The Fixer, Jason, how you doing? Melanie's a boot camper, how you Lubna, love to always hear from you too. And you know what? I don't know if you saw it, but that really nice comment that you put on my YouTube channel, we circulated that on social media and told everybody to look at this and come join us. So that was like, dang nice of you. Arvind, how are you? I got an interview through HireVue. HireVue records and sends the videos for the interview. They sure do, without a person. Any thoughts on HireVue interviews? Arvind, I would definitely watch. Here's my thoughts. Do everything that I show you in the video titled uh, Video Interviews for Job Seekers. So I have a, 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 a couple of videos out there, but go to the one that says, Video job, uh, video interview tips for job seekers. It's packaged, it's cut, it's just a lesson. It's like 20 tips of how I would go about that. And what happens in the higher view or other similar um, similar sessions or, or video recording, you basically, if, if you've never been through one of these, these are terrible. I mean, they're just 
it, no, I think it's awful that employers use them. They're not going to go away because employers, they think they're efficient. This way, they don't have to actually talk to a lot of people. But here's what you do. Get your, watch the video. Everybody should watch that video. I give you 20 points on everything you need to do to look awesome on camera, okay? And, and, and all that good stuff. The other thing that you, um, that you can do is you know, you make sure you got your environment set up. Obviously, I want you to be prepped with all the other interview stuff that I've created for you. But basically what they do is they, you open up your computer, you got a webcam or a, you know, or your little, you know, laptop camera or whatever it is. They give you a few minutes to get set up. They give you a few minutes to move around the vehicle to make sure that you're set and in the window. And then what they do is they usually give you a, um, a question. And then with the question, you know, you have like a minute to think about it. And then, you know, one, two or three minutes or however long they want to allocate to allow you to answer. Now, here's the thing about video interviews. If I was going to take a video interview, I would have this set up right here. Now, I have a 27-inch monitor that you all can't see. I'm talking to you through a web camera, okay? Or I could be talking to you through the Thunderbolt camera, or I could be talking to you through my laptop camera. Doesn't matter. But if I was doing a video interview, I would have all my notes sitting right in front of me because as soon as they give you the question, you can look at your notes and then, then talk. Hey, when they ask me this stupid question, I'm gonna give them that great answer. When they ask me this stupid question, Andy said, give him that great answer. You know what I mean? So like that's what I would do on those video interviews. And 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 they're usually pretty straightforward. So those are those are like, I mean, you get down talking to a camera, like the, one of the tips is like to practice. You'll smoke those things because everybody else hates them and everybody else thinks they look funky on camera because they do, because they're not used to this. So that's what I would do. And uh, go get them. Emma, how are you? My leader, Emma, you gotta wear your wear your wear your badge proudly, please. My new annual leader. Hey Brooke, how you doing? Another boot camper. Enola, hey, Carrie Freeman. Carrie, what did you call yourself? My walking advertisement, something or not. <laughs> God love you. All right. It does. Abdul, hey, Brooke. Yep. Oh, Bengal baby. 55 years young. Hey, I'm gonna be 53 in um wait, what day is that? In oh, hey, like in like a month. And uh, you know, I zipped off like nine, I don't know, almost ten miles this morning is all I had time for. This an age is nothing but a number. It truly is. Thank you, she Sheik, I think that is. Really love your live too. Catherine McCoy? Oh man. On your 60, oh, sorry about that. So let's, Steve, I'm not sure I'm getting your question here. Hey, Andy, I struck gold. My parents gave me 10 grand for education. Oh, okay. I have 20 plus years customer service experience and love computers. What would you recommend education wise? Steve. I can't, I can't tell you what to do education-wise um, because I would put that money toward any education that I could get that was moving me toward whatever it is that I wanted to do. So if you are you know, in customer service and you want to continue down that road, then I would do something, let's just say you want to continue down that path, then I would look for schooling, certifications, anything related to customer service stuff. It doesn't have to be a degree. It could be other things, schooling programs that you take from online trainers like me that might be more oriented toward interpersonal skills and those kind of things. So if, if, you, are, if you are looking for the 10 grand to create a certification or a degree, then, then that's, a whole, that's a whole separate thing. So I, you know, I, I, I would focus on what it is that I want to do going forward, and then I would figure out what types of educational vehicles would be the smartest value and return for me. 
I know that's not a great answer. It really isn't, but I that's what I would do. Hey, Sue, how are you? Yes, you know what, Sue, it's so funny. Um, I remember your your handle now, and, and you were here yesterday, and I forgot that that was you, um, but good to see you, my boot camper. So, Enola, you will get an email tomorrow. Folks, check those emails. All the stuff is in the emails. We're not putting any of that stuff out into the public domain. So, um, but if you're on the email list, you're getting all the gifts. You're getting all the li- you're getting all the gifts. All right, let's see. Vanilla. Yeah, Catherine McCoy, I love that story. Um, and I love the little uh here wait. Oh, how do you get the purple? Oh, I guess you could change the color. Miss Missile, uh, how do you overcome a language barrier? As in the interviewer doesn't speak English very well, how should I manage the interview as the interviewee? Okay, that's that's an interesting one because I think it's incumbent upon the company to present, an, and it doesn't matter if you're English speaking or any other language, wherever you're from, I think it's incumbent upon the employer to make sure that they are putting somebody in front of you that whatever language you're going to use to communicate, you're fluent. In. You, I mean, it's okay if you have an accent. It's okay if you're a little slower speaker. That's totally okay. But you know, you, you got to be able to exchange information. So in those situations, and obviously I don't know how poor a communicator the interviewer was in the in that language, which obviously was his or her second language, or at least, or maybe maybe even more. Um, I I tend to in those situations, I tend to um, often make sure that they understood me by asking. So was that clear? You know what I mean? Was I was I clear that? And then what I find myself doing is is re- not repeating the same words, repeating the same sentiment. So another way I would say that is, so another way I would say that is, and so on. So what I'm really trying to get at is, and I would I would then reiterate it using a using different language. <clears throat> that's what I would do actually, because I'm not sure without being in the room and seeing it. That's what I that's what I would suggest. Making sure that um, that you give them different different language for the same sentiment to ensure they got the message. Remember. Effective communication is about an accurate exchange of the meaning or the message. It's not the words you use. It's not the gestures you use, right? It doesn't make any difference, right? When my dog comes and they pile up on this ball right here with me, I know they want to eat. That's exchange of information, right? Like they don't have to say a word. Sometimes, you know, the, the words aren't always exactly what, you know, what you're trying to say. So, so, but that's what I would do there. Denise, how are you? Johnny Stevens, tried and true man, Lincoln, Rhode Island, 60 days on the new job. That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, All right, let's see. Wait, I think this is a question. I forget to tell you guys, make sure to put question marks in front of your Okay, Han, the firm decided to shut down our department and we are told to find roles within the firm. Okay, this happens a fair amount when when you, you work in sizable enough companies. The role given to me doesn't match my capability. I do not want to downgrade to a lesser role and look and looking for an executive role. How difficult and time required to look for an executive role? Han, I can never tell you that. And as a matter of fact, don't let anyone fool you by giving you a time frame of how long it's gonna take you to find any role, whether you're junior, mid-level, or senior, or executive, or the CEO, or whatever. Everything's different, everybody's different. Your, your strength of your network, your, the robustness of your industry in the region you're in and so on all contribute to what the time requirements are. If I wanted to, I could probably, me, find a job in a day. If I didn't, if I didn't care if it was the ideal job 
or whatever. I bet you I could find an executive job somewhere in the Chicagoland area from the 8,000 people that I would be calling in the next few days. That's not, that doesn't mean I'm going to find the right job for me or one that I'm highly interested in and so on. So the other thing is, I, I can't tell you what to do, but this much I will say, it, it probably is smart for you to move roles so you have some continuity and then, and then go full on job search even in your other role. And then if you are explaining to a new employer, well, how did you go from here to there? Then just say, hey, look, I, you know what? Uh, my, my firm decided to shut down our department. So what I did just for, you know, to feed the family was I took this role because it was the only one available to me based on my background or whatever. And so that's why, that's one of the reasons why I, and what, what I generally like to do when you explain things like that Here's what immediately gets the employer or the interviewer to shut up. So if, if my firm decides to drop my division or my unit, I would say, you know, I really enjoy working for my company. And it was a really smart move on their part to shut down this particular unit. It just wasn't strategic for them. And, and I, I completely understand why they did it. Okay, so I then moved to this role so I could keep a job, but recognizing that my that my skills, I would rather you know continue to grow down the path I was on. That's why I'm looking. That's it. They won't if you have that kind of outlook and you just say, you know what, it it really was a smart business decision. You know that product line, you know they that wasn't really going anywhere. It was commoditized. It wasn't strategic for them. So, but. And then on you go. And that there, no one asks questions after that. Oh, okay, I understand now. And what, what it also says is, okay, you're not a malcontent. You're not blaming somebody. You just, you recognize it. You get it. It's a business decision. It's not personal. It's nothing to do with me, right? This is a strategic decision on their part. That's what you want to, that's what you want to convey. I don't know how long it's going to take you to find a job, but I would say that is how I would explain it, the transition. All right. Let me see if I can sneak one more in here. I got a roll, people, but I'm back tomorrow. Okay, Denise, Denise, my boot camper. While doing the networking challenge, one of my new connections who I reached out to cold asked why I decided to expand my network. Well, that's silly. I'm not looking for a new job yet, so I am not sure what to say. Say, I'm always looking to expand my network. It's, you know, so I recognize the value of the network and I just went through this experience where I really had to do some, you know, kind of I had a crash course in job search networking. And I feel like if I'd have had a healthier network at, you know, uh, on an ongoing basis, that it would have made this experience more fun, more pleasurable, more effective, faster, whatever you want. Denise, what I would definitely do for you and everybody else, I've given you my formula for how I go about maintaining my network. There's a video out there called um, Business Networking, How to Build Professional Relationships. I would highly recommend that you watch it and I would highly recommend that you do it. And as a matter of fact, Denise, if somebody actually asks you that, um, I don't even know that they're worthy of being in my network or yours. So uh, that's what I would say, that's what I would say on, on that one. All right, folks. 1203, I've got to run to a meeting. I'm back tomorrow. Keep, okay, get on the email list if you're not. If you missed the emails over the last couple of days, be on the lookout. Kara, I don't, what time, let's send tomorrow's at seven, I guess, because we want to make sure that people have the link for the show for tomorrow. I'll be posting that here in a few minutes. Uh, some of you transferred your questions that I didn't get to. You can put them in the comments here as soon as we click off. The um, YouTube will create a video from the live stream. You can add it there. You can come back tomorrow. Ask me the questions then if you'd like. Um, if you, you know, I mean, one of the things, I mean, like, you know, I understand these are an hour. Some, yesterday was an hour and a half. But, you know, if, if you come here and you, you get here early, you, you got the link in the morning, go pop your question in and I answer it for you. And if you can't stay for the hour, you can't watch the show, you can always come back to the video and hear me answer it. So that's another thing. And I appreciate anybody... Uh, I think Adam did it, and I'm, I don't know if there's a few more who did, but if you got these long ones, 
um, like I said, you know, maybe write them up in your notepad and then just put, you know, one of four, two of two of four, three of four, or whatever it is, because that's cool too. All right, uh, don't forget discounts. I got the goal setting masterclass that I'm going to be teaching live for free the 20th, 21st, and 22nd of August. Um, it's going to be a course that I'm going to be charging $197 for. If you can come to the live stuff, you're going to get it for free, um, but you got to pay for the recordings if you want them. But it's free if you show up. We're going to be doing it on Zoom. It's really cool. And and I'm actually, we're working the program this week and we're getting it all set up and all that good stuff. So great to see you guys. Always enjoy this time with you. I truly do. I truly do. Hope to see as many of you as I can tomorrow. Have a great day. See you in less than, I'll see you in 23 hours.